The world is full of influencers. Some set out to become one, while others just changed the world and found the spotlight. This is their story. Welcome to The Accidental Influencer, brought to you by Wild, the world's first social currency payment card and powered by Wild Drum, a new locale guilt-free alcoholic beverage. I'm Ridge Epen, luxury lifestyle influencer and co-founder of Wild. And on the show, I talk to some of the most inspiring people in India who went on to become leaders in their domain, but in the process, blew up on social media. Our guest today is considered to be the mother of Indian blogging and India's first influencer. She pioneered the billion dollar lifestyle blogging and influencer industry in India when digital media was still in its infancy. She went on to create a media powerhouse, popularly known as, and you may have heard of this, MissMalini.com, today's go-to digital destination for all things Bollywood fashion and lifestyle. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the one and only Malini Agarwal, a.k.a. Miss Malini. Hi, Malini. Welcome to The Accidental Influencer. Thank you for having me. So happy to you're here. Um, so, you know, diving right into what The Accidental Influencer is all about, right? What your journey as an influencer has been uh, until now. But the fact is that you didn't set out to become an influencer, uh, probably because, you know, that word didn't exist back then, back when you started, right? Um, what do you feel when you hear yourself called the India's first influencer. The OG, I like it. I love the OG tag. Honestly, like you said, when I started off, there was no such terminology. Um, influencer now, also influencers don't like to be called influencers. We're content, content creators. creators. So, I mean, I guess for me, I, when I look back at it and I saw this, I saw a bunch of really interesting shows recently. Um, actually, this is an old one, which is called The Great American Meme or something. Right. And they talk about how Paris Hilton was the first OG influencer in a sense, right? And now, of course, everyone is an influencer, whether you're a Bollywood star or a content creator. But the idea of being an influencer just never existed that you're someone who has a great emotional, mental, and actual, you know, tangible impact on someone's choices, life yeah. choices, what yeah. they eat, where they yeah. go, what they do, uh, what they wear. Of course. And I think that that's what's really interesting is that this has been a process of evolution. And, and now when I look back, I think about it and I guess I sort of was playing that role in different ways, whether I was doing a column or whether yeah. I was, you know, being a radio jockey. We were, we're all influencers sure. now, right? Yeah. Everybody is yeah. considered an yeah. influencer now, Absolutely. accidentally or not. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, for me, it was completely accidental. I would not have, uh, you know, ever imagined doing something like this because one, first of all, it didn't exist. So it's not even something I would have imagined. Yeah. But looking back, it all kind of makes sense. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, there must have been a point that when you realized that, um, you know, the people who read your blog or, you know, maybe follow you on social media are people that you influence. Right. It must have been like a, a switch that went off. What was that point? You know, I think that there's been different points for this. So when I started off, my whole journey wasn't done in this, you know, I'm doing this as a career or to make money yeah. because there was no money to be of made course. in it, to be honest. Yeah. It was more like it was my personal diary and it was to document my experiences living this extraordinary, um, you know, really fun life in Bombay where I was a radio jockey. And it actually all started off with the first iteration of the blog, which was the column called yeah. Malini's Mumbai. Yeah, I remember Ironically, that. 17, 18 years ago yeah. in the midday newspaper. And I used to sort of document the things I would see and the page three society yeah. at the time. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I always used to, and I remember the way that this all happened is the 2008, I was in, in Dubai with some friends and my friend Karin Wadera, um, and I was, we were chatting and I was complaining that, you know, I, I write in my column all about all the cool things I see, yeah. movies I watch, entertainment, art, and all of that. And uh, the editor cuts it down because of lack of space yep. to which celebrity in bold came with whom and left with sure. whom. And I was just, you know, sort of joking about that. And he said, so why don't you start a blog? Yeah. And I remember saying, what's a blog? And he said, it's like this online diary. And I said, but who reads it? And he said, don't worry about that. Um, and I still remember he made me my login on WordPress. Right. This is before it was even my domain. It was wordpress.com, wordpress.missmalini.com. Yeah. Um, and he, I still remember, no, I think it was uh, the 5th of May, um, you know, 2008. And I remember he sent me the login and I remember writing my first yeah. book. And that's literally how it happened. And, and I guess the way that I realized that the influence had had an impact, um, I'll take you a little further back in time. When I was a radio jockey and I did that for nine years, 
years. The last time I was ever on the air, I remember putting up the faders to a song by Bombay Vikings, which was Wuchali. Yeah. And being deeply depressed for days after that, saying, yeah. I'm never going to be this happy again. I'm never yeah. going to do something that I love this much yeah. ever again. Um, and sort of had made my peace with it. You know, when yeah. you're like, okay, now I've peaked. This is yeah. it. And now everything is going to be adulting and it's yeah. not going to be fun. Yeah. And then when I started writing the blog, people would start, you know, commenting or one day I went to this bar called The Ghetto and yeah. uh, someone asked me what I do. And I was like, oh, I used to be a radio jockey. Now I'm a blogger. Yeah. And they said, hey, what, what's your blog called? And I said, Miss Malini. And they said, you're Miss Malini. And I had the same <laughs> feeling of joy when yeah. someone would say, you're the RJ. And they're like, oh, I recognize your voice. And they recognized my writing. Right. Um, and they, you know, because when I told them who I was and and that's when I realized that, hey, there's something here, you know, that right. even though you think that on the internet when there's billions, gazillions of, of web pages, who's coming to yours? Yeah. Who has time? Yeah. Um, yeah. So I guess that was when it kind of had the most impact on me. And then over the years, uh, now it's it's really cute because I meet so many content creators who say, my mother said, if you want to be a content creator, do it like Miss Malini. And I'm like, thanks. I think I feel a little bit old, but I like it. But that's great, um, right? Being yeah. 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 But also, um, did you love writing back then as much as you enjoyed radio? Because I used to love radio. I used to, I used to remember listening I did. to your. Yeah, I would always say, you know, radio is my first love and blogging is my marriage. <laughs> uh, I love them both, but differently. You know, yeah. your first love is always your first love. But I've always loved writing. In fact, yeah. I was a writer before I was a radio jockey. Right. I still remember, and I'm really going to date myself now. I remember being wow. published in Reader's Digest. Wow. Um, that remember was, that? It used to be like these like days. The 80s. That was, it was the 80s, iconic 90s. magazine yeah, of, of the time. Yeah. And I remember. And even like in India, I was published in Target when I was 11 right. and I used to write all these deeply emotional poems. Um, but I, I've always loved writing right. and I think I love writing for the same reason that I love radio. It is the theater of the mind. Yeah. It really allows you to conjure up and, you know, use your imagination in a yeah. way that nobody else can do for you, Correct. which is why the book is always better than the movie. Right. And which is why even, you know, shock jocks like Howard Stern can literally just play the sound of a zip opening and you think there's a <laughs> yeah. naked girl in their studio. Yeah. So it's just the theater of the mind yeah. because our imagination is just so powerful. Yeah. Um, so I think those two things are very similar. And, and one of the things I did learn accidentally again from being a radio jockey was that even though you might be, you know, broadcasting to millions of people, yeah. you really should try to connect with everyone um, on, on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Because yeah. even if there's six, seven people in a car, each person is having a very individual, cerebral experience with yeah. that voice, which is why everybody thinks their favorite RJs are so good looking. Because yeah. in the theater of your mind, you've made them up, you've to, made look. Them up to look yeah. this perfect way. And this yeah. is a, the running joke is, right, oh, you have a face for radio. Right. <laughs> um, and I really used to love this concept that, you know, imagine when you're doing your radio show, I would imagine my best friend who's Paro sitting yeah. across from me and I would tell her things, uh, this imaginary version of her yeah. in a more excited way than I would yeah. normally say things. Yeah. And that way, that's why people felt that I was really connecting with them. Right. And I took that same ethos of connecting one-on-one -on -one yeah. to the blog years right. later. Uh, and right. I think that was the secret sauce of the Miss Malini voice, that it's right. not just, you know, a media dump of... Uh, 30 pictures of Aishwarya Rai in front sure. of a checkered yeah. background. It's my fly on the wall perspective right. of it. Um, and I think that's what people resonate with. And I think that was kind of the origin of the content creator and influencer resonating right. with anyone. Right. It feels more, more human. Real. Yeah. You know, and you real. connect with people. Yeah. Yeah, because that was my next question. My next question was, what do you think it is about you that resonated with people? But I think it is that, right? Because yeah. it was your unique voice that was unlike anything else. And especially at that time, unlike yeah. anything else that was... That was available. No, and I'll tell you what it is. For me, it was, see, I love Bollywood. I've, yeah. You know, I, I didn't grow up in India from zero to 17. Every country you went to, and again, I'm going to yeah. date myself, we used to get these VHS tapes of two A movies, two B and two C, <laughs> yeah. okay? And I have watched literally every yeah. movie known to man. Right. Um, and and I remember I used to have a scrapbook of every Amir Khan cut out from yeah. like the Cine Blitzen film fair. That's where, yeah. that, that's where we used to get all that content. Yeah. And when I moved back to India, you know, I was so amazed with the enterprise and the, the passion and, you know, young India is, is doing so much. Absolutely. But what you see abroad, and which is why, like, people used to ask me in school, do you go to school on an elephant? Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. now looking back, I'm like, that would be amazing. Yeah. That would make me some kind of royalty for sure, <laughs> yeah. like my elephants in the back. But at that time, you realize it's because people just see what they see on National Geographic right. or yeah. they see Slumdog Millionaire. And, yeah. and that's that's also a reality sure. of India. But there's so much enterprise and not represented. Like, where are our icons? You know, I yeah. always say we have Chota Bhim, 
and Amitabh Bachchan. Yeah. Where is the middle ground for yeah. us? So that's kind yeah. of the voice I wanted to create, right. and that's why I created that Miss Malini anime, uh, yeah. who I thought is one is going to age much better than I will, and two, she sort of represented, you know, um, the Indian girl who loves Bollywood music, who right. danced at her best friend's wedding, but loves travel and yeah. culture and pop bands and yeah. all of these things, sort yeah. of rolled into one, yeah. and unapologetically so, yeah. because you know we grew up in a, a time where everyone would ape the West and yeah. so desperately want to be. Uh, like all the cool kids Correct. from, you know, yeah. 902, no, 201 award. Not Beverly yeah, Hills, yeah, exactly. Beverly Hills, yeah, yeah. But now that's changed. Yeah. And I mean, if you look now, the cool kids are the cast from class, yeah. you know? Yeah. So I think it's amazing. And I wanted to document this journey. And that's where it all started off. And right. then it sort of accidentally uh, escalated <laughs> into my whole life. Yeah. But uh, no regrets. No, but you've done so much between then and now, right? Um, and, and, you know, obviously, I have to say, you've aged uh, way better than your anime. Oh, thank well. you. I have to say that. Thank you. Um, but it must have been hard, right? So, like, if you actually think about what influencers do, oh. uh, working with brands, what was it like back then? I mean, brands obviously didn't know that something like this existed. How did you get them to, um, like, think of you as someone that, that they should use as a medium to advertise or, or brand build? Um, How is that? So it's actually, so I have to give full credit to uh, my first uh, co-founder, business yeah. partner, Mike yeah. Belly. He really spent so many years beating down doors in advertising, trying to explain right. influencer marketing before the words existed. For me, I still remember my very first, like two things happened. One, I got an email from the One Drop Foundation, which okay. is sort of a global foundation to bring awareness towards, you know, the environment right. and saving water. And they said, uh, we're doing something where we're sending somebody into outer space to for One Drop Foundation. Right. And if you write a blog about it, we'll send you a flip video camera. And okay. I was like, this has got to be a lie. Like, who's yeah. going to send me a camera? This is back in 2008. Right. And uh, I was like, okay, let me try. And I did it. And they did. They sent me a camera. And I right. was so amazed. And it was, I think, just by the lack of no other, if you search for bloggers in India, yeah. I think mine is the only one that showed up at the time, right? right? I think there was like one or two others. Sure. And I, I remember the, you know, High Heel Confidential yeah, girls and yeah, stuff were around yeah, the same yeah. time. Um, and brown paper bag, but that yeah. was just about it. And then the other thing that happened is I remember my very first, uh, and everything then was collab and barter, right? Yeah. Nobody paid you yeah. anything. I remember yeah. the first uh, thing I ever did is I went to Delhi for Levi's right. again in 2008 and they gave me a pair of jeans right. and flew me for free and put me up in a five-star hotel and I had to go and interview uh, Ileana de Cruz and right. um, Jacqueline Fernandez yeah. and uh, Chitrangada and yeah. I was like wow this is amazing yeah. and, and and that was all for one pair of jeans right. you know yeah. and and so yeah. it all started off like that it was all very barter and, and it's interesting because that's how the world started right we Correct. were the barter yeah, system absolutely. that I'll give you potatoes yeah. you give me tomatoes yeah. and you know yeah. That's how it works. And yeah. then now it's like a well-oiled machine. There's yeah. so much, you know, that goes behind it. Everyone knows the statistics and the algorithm yeah. and, you know, all the terminology. Yeah. Yeah. But at that point, we were just sort of figuring it out. And, and right. I think that we learned a lot along the way. But as a result, I was, you know, there's a lot of freedom to make it up as you go along sure. when you yeah. don't have to follow a path. Yeah. But one of the things that I struggled with a lot initially was, who am I? Because there's nobody else doing what I'm doing. Right. So maybe I'm doing yeah. something wrong. Uh, and I think yeah. that's the biggest lesson and takeaway for anyone who's accidentally doing anything, is that if nobody else is doing it, doesn't mean that, that you're doing what, it wrong. Yeah. I really struggle with that because I was like, okay, I'm not a Bollywood star. I'm not Kim Kardashian. I'm not really a fashion or beauty right. expert. I just sure. write about all the things that I love. Yeah. But why isn't anybody else doing it? I must right. be doing something wrong. Right. Um, and I had a whole existential crisis around it. Really? And then I realized, yeah, completely. And I always tell I people that. that it wasn't yeah. just something that just came naturally. I was like, this something, something's off. Because, you know, they always say, well, if it's that great an idea, why hasn't why anyone, anyone done it? it? Yeah. But that's true for any invention ever, right? Someone so thought true. of it first. Yeah. Um, that's why I always tell people, don't you don't need to. I take inspiration for sure, yeah. but you don't need to be exactly like anyone else and content creators and influencers are living proof that people like that uniqueness. And if yeah. you hear anybody, any influencer, any creator will tell you the most important thing is be authentic, yeah. be yourself. And you might keep hearing these words and they're becoming sort of a blind spot, but it's just true. Yeah. And they're little things, you know, and, and actually it's one of the things actually I actually picked up from Lily Singh. Oh, I think it's staying at the Regis, by the way, um, who basically said, uh, you know, so she says the things like T-shirt reference or what's in the combo. You yeah. have certain things like I say to the moon and, you know, I, you know, little stories that, you know, you think that will yeah. never make it anywhere. But they all ended up in my book. Right. And, yeah. and, you know, when you might think there's something silly or quirky about you that you dial down uh, around people because you think it's 
awkward yeah. don't do that that's actually that's the most unique and probably endearing thing about right. you um, and I think that's what creators do so well, right? Everybody has like, like you know, mostly Satan has her dumb, dumb army. Yeah, yeah. Go for it, you know, yeah. if it feels right to you, put it out there. But that's so true. In fact, I've known you so long uh, and we've been really close friends for so long. I didn't know that you had that existential crisis because you made it look I so it well. effortless. <laughs> um, and I didn't think that, uh, you know, that you had any thoughts about it because it's so true. Um, people keep asking you, is this for real? Like, at why people keep asking us, is this for real? Yesterday, somebody asked us, uh, I was on an interview and somebody said, um, but why hasn't anyone else done this? Done it. It's so simple, an idea. It's like, I don't know, uh, it's that simple. But we then question ourselves as well, uh, if it's so simple and no one's done it, is this, is this something off? But yeah. that's true. It's so true. It's so it's, true. You and don't you know, need to. You and don't it's, need to it's have that thought. shocking how much that prevents people yeah. from getting things done yeah. or pursuing a dream or even having an idea. Like yeah. even if it's a content piece idea yeah. that you might be like, oh, and you're like, oh, well, no one's done it. Maybe, maybe there must be something wrong. I haven't thought about it yeah. enough. But until you find a flaw yourself, yeah. don't give up on that idea yeah, that is absolutely. literally the core pure definition of invention yeah, yeah, <laughs> is true. something that doesn't yet yeah, exist yeah. and should have existence. Yeah. Great life lesson, people. Great life lesson. Um, but tell me, what was the, the real life impact of this, yeah. this massive digital explosion? Because at, some, at, at one point, a couple of years in, you um, absolutely went nuts in yeah. terms of reach, in terms of how people looked at you, how brands looked at you. Um, suddenly, everybody wanted you everywhere. You were winning awards. What was the real life impact of all of that? I mean, one, I, it, it was amazing. It suddenly went sort of interstellar. And, but I think it was also a key of kind of always sort of being a little bit of a nerd and dabbling in technology yeah. ahead of my time. So even when I worked before I was a radio jockey, when I worked at MTV, I literally taught myself Photoshop, Dreamweaver. I don't think anyone uses it anymore Dream to build Weaver. the entire that existed. MTV. <laughs> I'm sorry, the MTV yeah. website. And I used to do all my own like coding. Yeah. I used to use this website called glassdog.com oh, yeah. to teach myself HTML, all these random things and Photoshop. And it's actually very therapeutic. And in fact, a lot of creators will resonate with this. I find editing videos and pictures, all of that yeah, very therapeutic. Yeah. Yeah. Or even when you're like, I run a lot of Facebook communities just doing those approvals. It's a weird yeah. therapy for myself. Yeah. So I think the explosion was, um, in, it happened at different stages. So when I was a radio jockey, I decided to start using Twitter to take requests. Okay. And this is actually super, super uh, interesting because one day, uh, another fellow radio jockey, um, Mihir Joshi, yeah. um, you know, sent uh, tagged Imran Khan saying that, hey, since you like, uh, you, the, you know, Malini plays, and this is before I was Miss Malini, I was right. just Malini, RJ Malini, plays the songs you like on the sort of the night right. shift. And um, I, as just a throwaway reply, said, hey, Imran, why don't you come host the show with me sometime? Right. Never in a billion years thinking that this yeah. guy's going to come and do this. Because he was a big star by He was a big yeah, star then. Time, and then yeah. he replied saying, done, if only on one condition, if you call it pirate radio. I was like, what? And the reason why Pirate Radio is, and he explained this to me, it's based on a movie yeah. Um, yeah. where, you know, in London, when they weren't allowed yeah. to play pop music, they had found a hack by yeah. playing it offshore that yeah. they could play a, all the songs on a boat. On a boat. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a great film. It's actually yeah, it's half the film. cast of Love Actually, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. <laughs> um, so he came and he sat with me in the studio face to face for four hours right. and played. And this is unheard of when Bollywood stars are supposed exactly. to be so un uh, approachable or and from where and we sat and I remember sitting across the room for four hours in the studio talking between songs and he right. played me all these great songs and it was just amazing and then yeah. I thought that was so cool that the next I was like well let's be ballsy and I remember Facebook messaging Farhan Akhtar to say will right. you be my next guest right. and he replied really? so then he came to the studio yeah. then I was like okay well let me try Rahul Khanna so basically all the Bollywood guys I had crushes on essentially I'm like let me just go down the list <laughs> and call them and see who says yes and right. that's literally where this whole thing began and I used to right. have uh, my little digital camera and while I was recording my my links I would video them yeah. so if you you go to my Miss Malini videos YouTube channel you'll yeah. still find videos from 2006 or 7 wow. or 5 of all these guys in right. the studio like Farhan Akhtar with his headphones on you know <laughs> uh, talking so cool. to me and and yeah. this is like OG stuff yeah. and um, but that was it it was just a matter of random experimenting and yeah. then years later I realized you know like I used to play a lot of games on the radio right. you know and I was to have fun sound effects and yeah. years later I saw this is what content creators are doing yeah. whether they're playing the whisper challenge or yeah. whatever yeah. and again it's just a matter of if it feels right yeah. try it um, and the other flip side of this is 
if you, you know, give it some time and if it's not working, kill it. It's okay. Think of something yeah, new. new. Just because yeah. you've decided like yeah, you have you this pivot. format. Pivot. People yeah. do that all the time. In fact, yeah. I just heard Clubhouse has pivoted from uh, an entire, you know, the, yeah. the, their whole format to now voice messaging app. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Oh, wow. Breaking news. Okay. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, and, and so, I mean, there must have been people that, that influenced you along the way, right? Obviously, there was no one that you had, uh, you know, that, that maybe you know, was termed as, you know, uh, someone in your field in India. But was there anyone else, like maybe Paris Hilton or someone like that? Or yeah. Perez Hilton. Actually, absolutely right. So the example that Karan gave me when I started out was Perez Hilton. Oh, really? Per, uh, yeah, Perez Hilton, because it's he's basically a blogger, you yeah. know, who's done a pun on the Perez yeah. Hilton name. Yeah. Uh, but the one that I actually ended up copying more was Just Jared, which is a positive spin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and Pop Sugar. And those were sort yeah. of my icons. And always I've sort of looked up to people like Oprah and Ariana right. Huffington and Ellen DeGeneres and always yeah. kind of... Uh, low key, and I'm manifesting this. Wanted to have my own Oprah show where I'm like, you get a car, you get a car, yeah, one yeah. day. So yeah. I think it was it was a mix of that, um, and that's what I thought was really interesting is that you know, historically, we come up with things in India. It happens four or five years after yeah. it's happened somewhere else, yeah. um, and and it, that's exactly what happened. And right. and I think that again, I think that I was um, it was tough, but it was also to my advantage that. I was so early in the game yep. that there wasn't a lot of noise out there. And sure. now it's so busy that if somebody wants to start today, yeah. it's yeah. so overwhelming, right? Yeah. Because you're like, oh my God, how will I ever catch up to someone who has Correct. 20, 30 million followers? But I, that's what I have to tell yeah. you. You don't have to do that. You know, again, um, I always give this example and I'm writing my second book. It's coming yeah. out in January. It's called Under the Influence. And it's um, basically your guide on how to survive and thrive online from everything I've learned. And, you know... The, the most interesting thing that I've ever sort of learned, and again, by accident, about social media and the internet is this whole uh, desperate greed for yeah. likes and followers yeah. is a tough one, right? Because what does that number really mean? Someone yeah. with 1 million wants 10, someone with yeah. 10 wants 50, 50 right. the 1 million, it's never ending. Yep. And because it's worth nothing, you can yeah. never have enough, enough. of nothing because yeah. <laughs> it's never worth anything. Yeah. Um, so I yeah. always, I say like in this book, it's literally the key, it's kind of a part of a TEDx I had done, right. which is you have to unsee the numbers and see the people again. Yeah. Because even if you only got like 50 likes on your picture, yeah. if 50 people were in a room, yeah. coming up and giving you a hug or tapping you on the back for it, yeah. literally double tapping you, yeah. you would feel so good. Yeah. But we have forgotten to value that. Yeah. And that's kind of what's taking away a lot of joy, I think. Yeah, but that's so true. You know what, a couple of days ago, this girl posted a picture saying, oh my God, I just hit 100,000. And she was at a football stadium. And she said the capacity of the stadium, stadium. is 80,000. She's saying, I could fit all my followers I couldn't, couldn't. Fit, all my, fit all my followers in this stadium. Exactly. And when you think of it from that perspective, you're like, oh my God, yeah. even 10,000 people, yeah. even a thousand people is a lot of people. It's a lot of people. Yeah. It's just that we don't see that number because now we're looking yeah. in the billions, you know? And yeah. if you just even think about how much a billion is, it's sort yeah. of like out of the realm of understanding. Yeah. And there's another, um, there's a movie, I think on Netflix, which is called uh, The Social Dilemma, yeah. in which it says that part of the problem is that as humans, cognitively, we were not prepared to be judged by so many people. Yeah. You have that orbit of friends, family, okay. well-wishers, some people who are frenemies, yeah. whatever it is in your orbit yeah. that you're supposed to take feedback from, but it's yeah. become overwhelming. Okay. And I was actually stuck trying to finish my book. Um, and then I met the founder of Quorum. Yeah. And uh, thank you, Vivek, really helped me out. He basically helped me with the concept of the Dunbar yeah, theory, theory, which says that cognitively we are able to have at any given point, 150 meaningful relationships yeah. only. And some people fall ill and out of right, that group, sure. right? And this means your close friends, your family, your colleagues. If you yeah. think about it, most weddings are 150 people at the core. Right. Um, so, you know, and right now what happens to us, and we talk about this all the yeah. time, we'll go somewhere and we'll see someone who's from social media and we just see so many faces, it's almost impossible to, to remember. To, to remember. Yeah. And that's why I like doing a lot of like, at, at Good Creator Co, we do a lot of yeah. physical events because yeah. that's memorable to me. If I meet you in person and look you in yeah. the eyes, I'm much more likely to remember you yeah. than if I have doom scrolled your Instagram. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But it's hard to get that those that that whole number thing out of your head, right? Of course. Um, I mean, it's it's uh, when you start off, especially, you're always trying to hit a milestone and then the next milestone. I know it's a chase, but 
you know that uh, you know there's a certain amount of success that comes after you hit a certain kind of milestone, sure. especially if you're trying to be an influencer or a content creator, because that's when you really start maybe monetizing. Yeah. When you started, you didn't really have to think of monetizing it. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure you looked at those numbers and you got excited. I'm sure your first thousand. I remember you telling me once you had a story about I, the first thousand, right? Through a party, <laughs> when I reached yeah, I my you first you. thousand yeah. Facebook followers, yeah. like in fans, yeah. and and. Um, I had a party at Hard Rock Cafe and I called everyone and yeah. like like 300 people showed up, which is a great number. Right. And I was like, and I remember thinking, oh, why didn't all thousand come? I'm like, because that's insanity. Yeah. Um, and my friend Sid Kuto made me a song. He made me the Miss Melanie song. I had a cake. <laughs> like I took it so seriously. Right. It was for a thousand. But this is back in 2000, yeah, like yeah. eight or nine. Yeah. Um, but those are the little wins. And, yeah. and it's amazing to me that you know, how things have escalated. But see, I'm not saying numbers don't mean anything. Of yeah. course they do. They do because that helps you track things. Even Correct. I'm not going to lie and say I don't look at the numbers, but I have done one thing. I have turned off the public display of my like count on my yeah. posts. And I've also turned off seeing other people's. Right. Because I realized what I would start doing is I would, one, whenever I go to someone's post, just first see the number of likes yeah. and form a prejudgment yeah. on the value of this content Correct. and not decide for myself. Yeah. And also for me, see, when I started out, I would write my blog and I wasn't using much social media yeah. back in back in the time and I would put it out there and I remember going to events, coming home, writing the whole blog, putting it up and feeling this great deep sense of satisfaction that it's live, yeah. it's published and I'm yeah. done. And I wouldn't, there was no uh, jury of, you know, public court of opinion yeah. that is now going to decide whether this piece of content was great it's or not. It was great. Yeah. It was a great experience putting it out sure. there for myself. And then there would be comments or whatever, and I'd be happy right. reading them. And that was just never this feeling yeah. that, okay, now I put up the content. Now I let other people decide yeah. whether it was worth doing. Sure. Yeah. Um, so I'm really grateful for that. You know, I'm grateful that I'm also that generation that had to pick up a landline and make a plan. And if yeah. I didn't show up, I couldn't text someone. And sure. like, do you remember how many phone numbers you used to know by heart back yeah, in the day? Yeah, exactly. Everything. All of so it. So all yeah. of it. So I think that, and, and I moved to Bombay with an alphanumeric pager. Yeah. Like I didn't even have a phone. Yeah. And I've actually started a series now where I'm doing a throwback because it's 15 years of Miss Malini right. this year. Wow. Uh, and I pulled out my little pink camera and yeah. the little flip camera and all this fun technology I used to have. Yeah. And I think what's really incredible is that, that you know, see numbers are where they are. They'll have a place sure. in your head for it for sure. But at the end of the day, and I always tell content creators this, is how th be very cognizant of how what you're doing is making you feel yeah. constantly because right. if you're putting up posts or you're taking pictures and doing whatever and you're not enjoying it yeah. then you know that's not for you correct like i know that the days that i really enjoy myself is days when i've sat writing yeah. or i've made a really fun piece of like made fun okay. content or now when i'm shooting like fun OOTDs. Yeah. but there was a time where i was going through the motions of doing things yeah. just because everybody else is doing it and following trends and following trends yeah. and then the pandemic hit yeah and um the, the best thing, the silver lining of that was that everybody had to stop doing it. Yeah, yeah. Everybody had to press pause simultaneously. Yeah. Yeah. So it's kind of like when you know, if you're trying to sync something with people, you're not worried about losing the race if yeah. everybody had to stop running sure, for a correct. minute. Yeah. You can take a break. It's a great leveler. It's a great leveler. Yeah. And then I saw how my content changed. So many content creators emerged from that yeah. space of, you know, just creating content at home. Yeah. Um, and I think it's incredible. And I, I feel so, you know, uh, amazed at the journey everyone's been on. You're like, I've been right. doing this for literally 15 years, but now there's creators who've been doing it for five, 10 yeah. themselves. Yeah. Yeah. And the hustle is real. Yeah. There's no um, off switch yeah. for sure. Yeah. And I think I told you this, I was talking to Janna Zubair, who I think has more followers than Ranveer Singh, some yeah. 40 yeah. million plus. And she said something so interesting. And, and this is something I think all content creators need to hear is, you know, people always make this comparison that, oh, wouldn't you rather be known as an actor or a celebrity yeah. and what's content creator? You know, they, we used to sure. get a lot of shade, you yeah, know, back yeah, in the yeah, day, absolutely. which is changing yeah. now. And she said that, you know, when people say, but, oh, why do you want to be known as a content creator? Yeah. You were an actor, you should prefer that. Yeah. She said, um, and she's like all of 20 something. Yeah. She said it so sweetly. She said, Ki, you know, I'm acting then people are liking me and appreciating me for somebody else's words, yeah. somebody else's idea, somebody yeah. else's character, where yeah. I'm pretending to, to be, be somebody, else, yeah. somebody else. When people are liking me as a content creator, yeah. because of who I am. Yeah. Now you tell me what I should like more. Right. And I thought, that was, I was like, that is the that best is really response cool. yeah. I've ever heard anyone give yeah. for why you should be proud of being a content creator. Yeah. 
That's so true. You don't think of it that way. You don't. That's brilliant. Yeah. Um, but you also mentioned your book. Um, you know, I, I, the first book was fantastic. I absolutely loved it, To the Moon. Uh, if you haven't read it, guys, go pick that up first and then wait for the sequel. I don't know if it's a <laughs> sequel necessarily, but kind of. um, it's called Under the Influence. Tell yes. us all about that. So Under the Influence, first of all, I'm very proud of this name, so I hope you it's like it. It's a great name. It's I'm actually running name. a poll on my Instagram right now to help me pick the book cover, whether it should be yellow or green, so please vote. I know you have <laughs> I a preference the of the yellow. Um, so Under the Influence started off as your dummy's guide to being a good person online. Now right. we've changed the tagline to how to thrive and survive right. online. So my, the premise of this book is honestly this, that... You know, all of us entered the digital age and jumped on social media yeah. with absolutely no training, no do's and don'ts. Yeah. And I guess we all thought that first, okay, one, we're not really taking it too seriously because it's the internet, sure. like it's just a playground, it's yeah. make-believe, it's not real, real. right? Yeah. Um, and so there was no textbook, yeah. there was no how to behave online. Yeah. And I guess we assumed maybe that we'll behave the way we do in real life, Yeah. but that's not what happened. Correct. So we don't follow the same... Uh, basic decorum of human decency yeah. online where, you know, even, and you, you might think of yourself as the nicest person. Yeah. And I've unpacked this in the book. I found I was an accidental troll too. Really? Really. Okay. And this is because if you think about what does, when I was originally the gossip girl, for yeah, instance, yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah. What does anyone who writes about a third person as a blind item yeah. or says something about someone uh, technically not even behind their back, but behind the, you know, sort the of veil. the guy veil of a laptop or a computer where sure. they don't know who you are. Yeah. That's what trolling is to an extent. Correct. And I learned this in the most interesting way. I remember I had, you know, as a gossip blogger, you get a lot of pictures of celebrities without their hair and makeup sure. or a pap shot that you're yeah. not supposed to see. And that's what people love to consume, Correct. voyeuristically. Yeah. And I had gotten some pictures of Rajnikanth uh, without his hair and makeup. Right. And I didn't even think about it twice because I thought, hey, you know, Perez Hilton would post this. And sure. I put it up. Yeah. And the next day I woke up and there was a this, like a flood of comments and they weren't trolling me, yeah. they were so overwhelmingly upset uh, that I had put these pictures up right. because they worship him. Yeah. And they brought to my attention something really interesting. You know, we talk about fat shaming yeah. and skin color shaming. Yeah. I had shamed him yeah. for not looking the way he does with all of his hair and makeup. Correct. And I really thought about it and I was like, wait a minute, I think that I've done something wrong. Yeah. So I took down the post and I wrote an apology. Right. And I said, okay, wow. I've learned something here today. Yeah. Um, and another couple of things, and that's why, you know, this, this book is really not just about, oh, me just telling you holier than thou all the things you should yeah, do. Or do. Yeah. I've learned these the hard all way. These, all the mistakes that you made. Mistakes yeah. I've made yeah. and, you know, life lessons I've learned. And I remember, you know, because when you're a, a, a columnist in a newspaper per, per chance yeah. or we work for someone, you, you might write something and you don't, you never come face to face with sure. the yeah. person who is... You, the victim of your words, so to speak. Yeah. But then as the lines blurred and I started going to a lot of these events, I would run into a Bollywood celebrity. Yeah. And I have a very funny Ranveer Singh story. Right. I remember the first time I met him was at, I think, Blender's Pride Fashion two years right. ago. And I went, I saw him and I, and this is when he was just starting out. And, yeah. you know, I've been doing this for a couple of years. And I went bounding up to him like, oh, Ranveer, I love you. And he said, Miss Malini, I'm really mad at you. And I was like, why are you mad at me? Yeah. And he said, you wrote a blog about, and this is so funny, because it was a blog someone had written. I had just hired a few writers then. Right. Uh, and someone had written this sort of slightly, you know, scathing Gaming. piece right. saying, um, Ranveer Singh should stick to acting and not try rapping. Oh, wow. And okay. ironically, years later, he's right. done Gully he's, Boy yeah. and absolutely crushed it as a rapper. Yeah. And at that point, my reaction was that, oh, no, no, but I didn't write it. Right. But I was like, but it went on my blog, yeah. so I have to take ownership. Yeah, correct. And that was another lesson to be learned, that, you know, um, maybe I need to then eat the humble pie or accept that I've said these yeah. words and then not try to be, you know, like, be defensive about it. Yeah. So then over the years, people who, you know, I used to hire a lot more writers, they couldn't sure. be everywhere. Right. They would ask me, can we write this? Can yeah. we write that? And then I established a very simple rule right. that made it very easy. Yeah. Um, and the rule is, from now on, before you ask me, can I write this? Should I write this? And you, you know, you think, oh, it's okay. It doesn't matter if I say this or that. I'm like, okay, the rule is you can write it if you can say it to their face. This is the greatest thing I've ever heard Malini say. And I hear her saying this at um, on panels at uh, uh, you know yeah. uh, award when you get win awards and stuff like that 
I actually love this yeah. because what you it's so true. It is something that all of us should learn. And we should do it Everybody even as someone who's a you know, consumer of social media. Absolutely. If I say from now on, yeah. before you type that yeah. comment, would you say this to their face? Yeah. If you think and you're pausing and you're like, I'm not sure. Yeah. Think yeah. about why you wouldn't. Correct. Would you not say it because it's something that it's so offensive? Correct. Or you'd be you'd feel like a bad person saying it to someone's yeah. face, or you'd be afraid that they'd get really mad Correct. or hate you? Then you should, then you should feel that right. way online too. Correct. You know, so these are the little things, Absolutely. the little learnings. Yeah. And ironically, it's not just about blogging or the internet. Yeah. We have done this as magazines like the Madam M's in the film yeah. fair yeah. or the blind items for years. Any kind Absolutely. of written word yeah. or gossip has always been. And so ironically, for someone who is writing Bollywood gossip, 80% of the things I've heard or know, I will probably never no, write. Yeah. And I'm okay with that. Right. And the fact that I'm still sitting here and have a career today um, is proof that enough other people are okay with that too. Sure. And I'm, you know, I decided that I don't like how it makes me feel when sure. someone feels bad. And, you know, the interesting thing is that it's all fun and games until they don't point out to you that, yeah. you know, you hurt their feelings. Yeah. But then it makes you feel like a bad person. And yeah. If you know that your words hurt someone, but you just didn't have to deal with them, sure. that that's time, still yeah. not enough. It's still not okay. And yeah. I think that those are the things. So my book is kind of divided into these three parts, which is about, you know, um, never say anything you can't write, to, you know, yeah. never write anything okay. you can't see someone's face. Um, spark joy. So this comes from, uh, you know, there, there's a, what's her name? The, she does this amazing TV show, the Japanese girl. Um, does anybody know her name? She does this show uh, where she talks about sparking joy, about cleaning up your house. She does. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, uh, Mary Kondo. Mary Kondo, thank yeah, you. I would yeah. have gone crazy. Yeah, so Mary Kondo, leaf out of Mary Kondo's yeah. book. Um, she says, Ho only hold on to the things that spark joy. But I gave this a twist, and yeah. for myself, I made it put only put out the things that spark joy. Right. And I saw a post years ago, but someone who said, "Okay, you think of yourself as an influencer, yeah. right?" But what kind of influence are you? Right. Influence doesn't always have a positive connotation Correct. when they say Could that be. you're drunk driving, you're under the influence. Could negative influence you could have yeah. influenza and be yeah. unwell. <laughs> so think about when people come to your page, do they leave feeling happier, uh, better or about themselves worse or worse? Them. Yeah. And make that kind of your agenda. So yeah. I like that, that spark joy with yeah. what you put out there. So it's not just like, oh, look at me living this best life. You know, yeah. it's because it creates that FOMO sure, yeah, and, yeah. and social yeah, media is a curation of everyone's perfect moments. Like Correct. people are not putting up the day. And that's that, not why you're doing it either. It's not right? what you're, not you're doing. Why you, yeah. And then finally is that what I said, you know, that followers are people too. Yeah. It's such a simple thought, right? And if we started unseeing the numbers and seeing people, yeah. we would behave very differently. Like just, I give this example all the time, right? I say that, um, especially when it comes to like how a lot of like, if you, like, your DMs are probably not filled with as many dick pics as mine, I'm yeah. guessing, but it's just a fact of life, right? You'd and I'm shocked. You'd be shocked, maybe. <laughs> and uh, that's probably, you know, and the thing is that, and I'm thinking that this guy, it's the equivalent of somebody coming down on this, to the street and just dropping his pants in front yeah, of you. streaking. <laughs> streaking, and that's not okay anymore, wow. but it took us a while to get there <laughs> as well. But we yeah. have to do the same thing. We have sure. to clean up the online yeah. version. And so that's why I started a movement called Ignore No More Online, yeah. because we were always told just ignore it, you know, and I was told to ignore it growing up too. Like if someone touches you inappropriately in public, don't make a scene. Like, but I didn't do anything. Of course I should make a scene. Yeah. Um, so I've digressed, but anyway, the point is literally that I this book is about all these learnings right. over 15 years, um, and I'm very, very excited about it. Right. And it, it's kind of an interactive book, so yeah. there's a lot of you know fun little, um, I guess, little assignments for you do for you to do, and then post nice. them, and then we'll repost them, and yeah. we'll see where we end up with it. I'm still in the process of almost being done with it, uh, but I've also asked a couple of my influencer friends to talk about how they've learned a lot, like, you know, Urfi has talked about cancel culture. I've asked right. Veerdas to talk about his experience with right. two Indias. Um, yeah. So I think that it's, yeah. it's interesting. I think it's a lot of learning. Um, and I hope it, it, it helps that next generation who, you know, maybe he's just born with the laptop and the device and, yeah. and, and no manual on how do you, how to, it's the equivalent of saying sure. that, okay, here, take my car keys. You don't know how to drive. Yeah. You'll be fine. Yeah. You know? Of course. Mm. But I'm so excited to read the book. I can't Thank wait. You. Guys, look out for Under the Influence by Malini Agarwal. It's going to come out next year, early January, next year. January, yes, January. Jan 2024, people. Um, 
Fantastic. You know what? I, I love everything that, that, that you said that the book is going to contain. Um, but it also goes back to a lot of learnings that you've had, yeah. right? Um, do, do you think that now that you've been in the industry 15 years and you've created, you've paved the way for a lot of people that came after you and will forever come after you? Because like you said, yeah. you will always be the first. Um, but do you think that there's a huge burden of responsibility now on you now that you have gotten to this place? I don't know if there's a burden of responsibility. I think that the one thing that we underestimate the next generation for is I don't really think they need our help that much anymore. So, I mean, in, the ter in terms of burden of responsibility is that as any kind of public figure, Correct. I feel you do have a burden of responsibility. Yeah. And, you know, as a role model or what people will think is cool, I yeah. do, I am aware of that. Or how just people as expect much. things from you. I right? expect people expect things from me. But I think that the good thing for me has been that I've kind of taken this happy, shiny track. Yeah. And as a result, I mean, there would be initially some people who thought, well, wh how can you always just be so positive and nice yeah. about it? There must be something wrong. Yeah. Um, I'm like, well, you know, it's, it's not that I'm always personally positive and yeah. nice, yeah. but I have decided that if I don't like something, I'm not going to give it more attention. Right. I, will, I would rather give something that I liked more yeah. attention yeah. and, you know, not take up mind space with something I didn't like. Right. It's the same thing. Like, we don't post pictures of funeral spotting. Which right, is a thing. Sure, yeah. Like you see celebrities at the airport, you see celebrities everywhere. Funeral spotting is a <laughs> shockingly popular yeah, thing here. Yeah. And I get it. Maybe there's a place for it and people want to see it. But I yeah. just can't imagine that it feels yeah. too invasive, you know? But that's the tabloid culture, right? Isn't that, isn't that like a, a part of how that, that entire industry functions? It like, is, but perhaps I mean... We never had paparazzi in India until yeah. recently and yeah. they that's their literally their job and but people the, love it it right? is yeah and it's true it's like where there is you know there is no um you know supply without demand correct but it has to stop somewhere right correct. literally princess diana died from yeah. this and sure. i think enough other people sure. um struggle from this public scrutiny like yeah. i myself have seen so many celebrities actors take their own lives yeah, uh, from the pressure. So yeah. I think we do have a burden of responsibility as the media as a whole right. also on how we behave. I can't speak for everyone. I'm sure I've made my mistakes and I'm aware of it. Yeah. But I think that, you know, also I look at it through this other lens. I'm so blessed to live in a particular, like I'm, I know I'm very aware of my privilege that right. I can live a life where I don't have to worry about the roof over my head, the yeah. food that I eat. Sure. So isn't it my responsibility to put more positivity out in the world Absolutely. than negativity? Sure. I mean, there's already so much pain and hurt and ache and, and right. you know, devastation in the world. Sure. Should I be adding more things to be sad about right. in people's <laughs> life? Or should I be adding something to be happy about? Sure. You know, I'm, I'm under no uh, illusion that I'm what I do saves the world in any sure. way. But if I bring someone some joy, yeah. or if I, you know, support someone who has a dream and yeah. they feel super excited that, oh my God, somebody was my witness, yeah. I think that that's... That's what I want to do. Yeah, and you can inspire them to do better or, or yeah. to follow their dreams of and course. things like that, right? But there, there, sh there must be things. Like, uh, I know there was that, that you like to put your life out on, yes. on social media. Um, but do you, like, do you look at it from a lens that, oh, you know what, there might be young people there who, might, who probably shouldn't uh, see some certain parts of my life. And so do you yeah. think of it from that lens? You know, I used to think about it from that lens, yeah. but I think that now there's just so much online oh, yeah. that... I'm probably not the one that's giving them the worst advice. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, I'm not saying yeah. that I'm free of any responsibility, sure. but I think that I'm pretty happy with how I turned yeah. out. Yeah. And I am I think that if anyone yeah. follows in these footsteps, they'll do yeah. okay. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, obviously I'm, I'm aware of, you know, uh, encouraging too much excess in any way. Sure. But I think that part of living your life fully online is, you know, I'll talk about the hangover as much as I'll talk about dancing <laughs> sure. on tables and be yeah. like, be aware yeah. uh, that that's in your future if this is yeah. a choice you make. Yeah. But I think that, you know, I think last time we spoke also, we talked about fame. Yeah. And um, yeah. I think about I think this a lot. Yeah. yeah. And I think that this is the thing is that, you know, there's a lot of burden on, on famous people. Correct. To live perfect lives yeah. because oh what will other people say yeah. you know i feel that the people that um you know like if i look at the people who influence me the most yeah. i don't think it's 
a celebrity's social media that's making me make my life choices. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it's probably people closer in my orbit, sure. my friends, my family, the people yeah. who matter the most to me, who have the most significant impact. Sure. So I don't necessarily even think that saying that, oh, like for example, you can criticize Urfi as much as you want yeah. for her, but if she's a good person, she's a good person. And I don't care what she wears, she can wear whatever she wants. Yeah. I was mildly worried about those fish. I hope they're good. But aside from that, um, I honestly feel that, you know, you have to let people be yeah, themselves and, sure. and let people, you know, I mean, we take ourselves so seriously. We're yeah. literally, I always say this, we're literally just all floating on a ball in the sky. <laughs> and any second now, some yeah. other intelligent life form yeah. is going to come and just put everything into <laughs> massive perspective for us. Um, but we, yeah. you know, we're, we're always so busy correcting each other and telling someone you should have done it differently. Yeah. Again, we're all just making it up as we yeah. go along. This yeah. whole illusion of right and wrong. Yeah. Who made that up? Yeah, our forefathers and it was conditioned. And we yeah. were conditioned to grow up, you know, thinking that's right and that's wrong. And, and that is, I think, unfortunately, in, in, um, in our society, we have that a lot, right? Yeah. What is passed on as, as tradition and, and what is right and what is wrong is yeah. ingrained from childhood. And you grow up thinking, okay, this is how it's supposed to be. Yeah. Um, and then you grow up and realize that, you know, these are uh, not the choices I would make necessarily, but I'm doing it because this is how I've been told to do it. And that's how everybody else did uh, it. And that's just else. how it is. Literally, I just watched the Barbie movie and I loved how they kind of unpacked this whole narrative. I mean, and we live in that era. And I always tell people in 2023, it's so great that you can, like, I can be a woman, be a business owner, be independent. Yeah. But I will still get the question that, oh, do you have children? Oh, yeah. did you choose your career over children? Yeah. How many men get asked that yeah. question, right? Absolutely. So it's still there. Absolutely. And it, it is the way it is, yeah. but I think it is changing. Yeah. It'll take time. Yeah. But just because something has always been a certain way doesn't make doesn't it, make it right. We used to think that everything revolved around the earth. Yeah. And you would have been burnt at the stake for saying yeah. otherwise. Yeah. Um, and, you know, tomorrow somebody will come along and discount the theory of relativity. Like, you yeah, know, sure, everything absolutely. changes everything constantly. Change, yeah. So I think you have to be prepared for that. Yeah. Um, otherwise, you will fade away. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. But also the social media is not, um, is not the safest place for, for most people. I mean, you know, you talk, yeah. about, you, and you talk about this all the time, right? Um, it's not a safe space for women, for sure. You've had, uh, you've been in tons of situations where yeah. you've had to, even have the cyber cops involved and yeah. stuff like that. Um, you know, does it change the way you behave online? The, I mean, the, 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 I the, think that it, it, I don't think it changes anything for me anymore. Yeah. But um, I have changed how I deal with situations like this okay. because we were, and I was also someone who would always say, "Just ignore it. Don't yeah. give the trolls attention." Yeah. I genuinely believe that. Yeah. And then I came across an, a common friend of ours, Tina Singh who said, you know, why should I ignore it? If I'm putting up a picture where I think I look beautiful yeah. and you can't handle how much of my skin is showing, yeah. that's on you, not on me. And yeah. that does not mean an invitation to slide into my DMs yeah. with like a picture exposing yourself. And why should I ignore you? Because I yeah. can't unsee what you've sent me, right? Yeah. It's literally the equivalent of someone sliding into your house, opening Absolutely. the door and exposing themselves and saying, yeah. well, you should just ignore this yeah. because otherwise you are encouraging them. Yeah. I don't think that's true. And, you know, now as a result, we, you know, I decided to do something about it. I work very closely with No Rape India, the National Commission for Women, that's amazing. Um, you know, with, yeah. with so many people. And I'm also on like the Women's Commission to try to change a couple of things. I think that we have to change uh, legislation to put some yeah. serious checks in place. And yeah. I think that we need to change primary school education, yeah. which starts with little things like two boys and girls when you are online, what is appropriate behavior? Just yeah. like I still see all my friends when their five-year-old gets a gift from someone, what do they say? You say, what do we say? Yeah. You say, yeah. thank you. Or say, can I have something? Please. Yeah. We need the same thing of what, what do we say when someone slides into <laughs> yeah. your DMs? Or do you slide into your somebody's yeah. DMs without permission? Yeah. All of this needs to happen. And this yeah. is something that we just didn't realize that there is a new virtual reality and you have to uh, educate people on how to live there. And I think this became so uh, evident to us during the pandemic because all of us were suddenly going live on Instagram. Right. And the messages that would scroll up, like a lot of my girlfriends who would do a live yoga session to help people stay calm during the pandemic, yeah. would get the most ridiculous comments commenting on their body right. because they're wearing yoga pants. Yeah. And you can't unsee that. And these yeah. are people who are no longer hiding 
because they're like, this is okay because this is how we behave on the internet. Right. But yeah. If we don't fix it, nobody else will. And I quote you all the time for this, Rich, because you said something so interesting, and I always say it, is that, you know, we always say the toxic internet and negative social media, but it's not some alienation, like yeah. you always say, that showed up. Yeah. It is literally us, yeah. um, and nobody else can fix it. Absolutely. Yeah, we, are, we always like to um, disassociate ourselves yeah. with, with, the, with the whole internet oh the internet is a bad place yeah. social media is toxic but it's us we are the internet <laughs> exactly. we are literally social media exactly. so if we don't change nothing changes exactly um you know and 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 if if for instance if all of this had happened like 15 years ago yeah. i'm sure we would have all dealt with it differently i'm sure you would have dealt with it differently right of course um but if the idea of of you know having influence and being able to um you know impact people every day if you had understood the value of that, of your social currency, yeah, um, you know, how would you have used it at the beginning of your blog? You know, I did a whole TEDx on this. I, I did, really? Yeah, so I did a, that, and that's where the book was born out yeah. of. I decided to calculate and put a number uh, and added up all the total, now it's probably much higher, yeah. of my number of tweets and Instagram, Instagram yeah. posts and Facebook posts. Yeah. And I realized I was flooding the internet with so much content over yeah. the years gagging for somebody's attention yeah, because yeah. you know you the more you post you the keep getting that dopamine, dopamine hit, hit. Yeah. i think i would have said less <laughs> really you think so? i think I would, less is more i would yeah. have been a little more mindful right. if i could go back and clean it all up based on my ocd would i you? would start from scratch <laughs> right. um i think that i would have been less um you know i would have second guessed myself less you right. know about what am i doing here and yeah. and you know and, and ironically like i didn't have instagram uh, for years, because I didn't have an iPhone. It was remember it was right. iOS yeah, first, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I was like, I would have got that iPhone yeah. had I known that yeah. it was going to be such a big deal. And yeah. at that point, it's like, oh, it's just That's another early. app. Why do you sure. need it? Yeah. Um, I just I would have probably trusted my instincts more, but yeah. I'm pretty happy with how things ended up. And I guess everything is, you know, it's the butterfly effect. Yeah. If you change anything, it changes yeah. everything. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and how life changed, right? And how how people change yeah. and how people live differently now now Completely. that they're on, on uh, social media you know for us at wild we we truly believe that everybody in the world is an influencer because yeah. we impact people every day right like without knowing it we recommend brands we suggest places to eat or yeah. party um but you know it, it's it's but very few people um you know have actually learned to leverage it or yeah. do leverage it yeah right? um what is your what is your thought on that i mean do you think that you know everybody has the ability to to influence and so should should like leverage it or should they just let it be i think everybody has the ability and i think that to some degree they do leverage it yeah. but you know we have this terminology in our minds of macro creator micro creator yeah. nano creator there's something even smaller than the nano creator right the nano micro whatever it is right. which yeah. is just you yeah. and your circle of friends yeah. And you do that every day unknowingly by yeah. saying when someone says, hey, let's go here for dinner, yeah. dinner, and you're like, no, 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 let's go somewhere yeah. else. And you are literally making that yeah. impact on your circle of influence yeah. anyway. So whether you like to believe it or not, just like Ridge said, you're an influencer. Yeah. You can open your Instagram. I love this exercise he does. He's like, go to your Instagram, <laughs> see your number of followers, yeah. and if it's more than zero, <laughs> you're an influencer. Yeah. Um, and I think that everyone does leverage it. Yeah. Should they? They might just be doing it accidentally. I don't think everybody likes the idea of being a content creator, influencer, yep. because just like in any industry, we have sure. a bad rap for certain yeah, things. Totally. Um, but, you know, there must be something that influencers and creators are doing right because people are not just handing out free things to people Absolutely. just for the sake of it, right? I know that so many, we get mocked so much that, oh, everything is uh, barter or free or collab. Yeah. But there must be a reason. And, and of course, there's always bad apples in every industry, sure. right? Yeah. But I think that now we've reached a point where there is a grudging respect, yeah. and I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which is, which is true. Yeah. Um, it's hard you know, to kind of get people to say that, but uh, I'm glad people are now seeing the value yeah. in influencers and content creators. I'm yeah. happy with that. But having seen both sides, yeah. um, you know, when it was before, pre- uh, blog and post blog yeah. or pre influence and post influence. Yes. Um, which one would you pick? Uh, so I'll tell you what, and I think I've talked about this in the book too. So, social media has given me my entire career, my yeah. life, an yeah. incredible, extraordinary experience life, that I yeah, wanted, yeah. but it took its pound of flesh. Yeah. And I do struggle with 
um, being present and in real yeah. time. Like if I don't have my phone with me, I'm also super free, right. but super anxious. Right. And I also feel like now I have this new problem and I'm sure a lot of creators face, face it is that I'll go do something amazing and then I know that I'm gonna have to relive it online. And there's some days where I will stay at home so my Instagram feed can catch up with my yeah. real life. <laughs> yeah. And that's insane. Yeah, that is crazy. That's yeah. crazy that I have to sit I at home, well. right? Cause yeah. I'm like, I, cause I have to post everything. Yeah. And I think sometimes that one day when Instagram is gone and that whole legacy of content is yeah. gone, who cares? And it's almost like you're so stressed about putting up this piece of content. Once it's up, you're like, oh, it's up and yeah. then you leave. So there is a lot that comes sure. with it. I don't think I would change anything. Yeah. I think I've had a really great time doing everything, whether it was yeah. being a professional dancer or an MC or uh, a radio host. At yeah. some point, I'll definitely go back and do radio again. Definitely. Yeah. Live radio is is just just a whole other vibe. You know, right. when you're playing the songs and you're singing along and yeah. it was just that great feeling. You guys would always listen and, yeah, you know, yeah. message me that I'm listening to you right now. There's something just really yeah. magical about it. Yeah. It's the same. It's dopamine, I guess. It is. Um, and, you know, and, and I recently saw an Instagram trend about layered music and how it expands in my, your mind and delights your mind because right. your mind has to do all these different yeah. things. And yeah. So I think I would definitely do that again. Right. Um, I do dabble with the idea of going off grid at some point and saying for my 50th birthday, I'm going to go live in an Airstream and have only a, like, a, a, like a mailbox, <laughs> not even right. have a phone that you can reach right. me through my PO box because wow. I have an addictive personality. Yeah. So I can't, it's all in or not. Because right. otherwise, if I have my phone, then the whole thing will be an Instagram feed about my Airstream and I won't really right. enjoy it. Um, and so I dabble with all these different thoughts, but I don't wow. know. Let's see what happens. Do you think you could actually do it? I think I could definitely yeah. do it. Wow. Will I? It remains to TBD. <laughs> TBD. <laughs> Would you pick fame over, you know, not being famous yes. or not being yeah. in the limelight yeah. anymore? Would you miss it? Would you? Right. And, and, you know, and I remember you asked me this and I was really proud of my answer. So I'm going to try to replicate it. <laughs> is that, um, there is, there is a double-edged sword with fame yeah. because, fame fades yeah. and uh, people will tell you this time and time again that those who were famous one day and now yeah. are no longer famous find it very hard to yeah. breathe because you're like, oh, you know, it's all gone. Yeah. But one thing I'm really proud of as I guess an entrepreneur and yeah. all the different things I've done, um, when I, I feel that I'm accomplished and with that right. came a side of fame. Sure. And the, the beautiful thing is when I walk down the street, I don't think people will say ever, Oh look, she used to be famous. Yeah. I think they will say, "Oh wow, look at her. This is all the stuff she, she accomplished. accomplished." And nobody can take away your accomplishments, accomplishments. even though the fame will go. We'll go. Yeah. Fame and will I, fade, but fame will fade, will but your accomplishment will never, never be forgotten. Yeah. And I, I love that, and I love that for you as well. That yeah. if you are someone who's done something as a creator yeah. or are famous for something. Yeah. Focus on what you accomplished yeah, from more than the fame that came with it, yeah. because then you will always feel uh, great about it. Right. And then the fame is just a beautiful side product, right, sure. but it isn't the main yeah. dish. Right. <laughs> you know? But that's brilliant because yeah. uh, it, it also makes you want to give, do more, right? Yeah. Do more things that that um, helps other people maybe accomplish their dreams Absolutely. and goals and whatever. Because, you know, when, you're, when, you, when, it's, when you have something that no one can take away, yeah. you're less guarded and afraid yeah. of the limelight hitting anybody else. Yeah. Because I will always have my accomplishments yeah. and I'm very no happy for you to be... No, nobody can take that even while you are growing yeah. yours. And I say yeah. this line all the yeah. time, especially when I speak yeah. with women. I'm like, you don't have to unscrew anybody else's yeah. light bulb to shine. Yeah. You can all grow together. It's a beautiful statement. Yeah. And it's so true. And I feel, and I think that this, this is another thing which is called the helper's high. You know, we all think about this dopamine you get when somebody comments on your pictures yeah. and builds you up. Yeah. But did you know there's a reverse of this? And I learned this because I used to have the same problem very recently, still recently, but I would go look at my post and be like, oh, it only got this many likes. or yep. And it's not even how I feel about it. I'm like, I have to start worrying about what will other people think that, about how many likes I got. Yeah. It's that. Yeah. So then I was yeah. like, okay, every time I do that, I'm going to close my Instagram and go to somebody else's page, right. drop a comment, say something, right. like something, and put that out there. And because, you know, how much you give is how much dopamine you get sure. from, because you always, there's nothing, you always feel a good emotion from giving. Right. Um, and how much you give is in your hands. Yeah. So what if I, and in the book I've unpacked this too, what if I told you the most valuable currency in the world yeah. is positivity, yeah. how much are you worth? Right. And the great thing about this is you could be a billionaire in it yeah. is because you are the only one responsible 
for making more of it. Right. It is not reliant on anybody Anyone. else. Yeah. And that is really empowering. So if I tell you from today onwards, your dopamine can come from you giving other people love or building yeah, them up. Joy, yeah. You're great. You're golden. You're going to be like the gazillionaire in it because yeah. nobody can take it away from you. And in fact, the more you give, um, the more dopamine you'll feel. And I'm right. living proof that that's a really good feeling. So yeah. I highly recommend it. That's beautiful. Yeah. But that's so true. Yeah. It's so true also. If you give more happiness, uh, there's a good chance that you will feel better about yourself and yeah. you'll get a lot more back. Try it. it try it. Too, Honestly, it try absolute. it today. Put up, Go to any yeah. post or anybody's Instagram that yeah. you like. And just say something nice. And post and share it on yeah. yours saying, I love this about yeah. you. You will immediately feel yeah. something really good course yeah. through your veins. Yeah. And they will too. They will love it. And then they're going to say something back. So you get a double hit of yeah, dopamine yeah, yeah. from something you started. That's brilliant, actually. Yeah, take someone's post and uh, post yeah. it on your stories and see what happens. Yeah. Uh, do it for two days and yeah. Do it. Every, I do it every day. It's great. Yeah. yeah. I know. Was, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. Great segue into our next, um, okay. you know, kind of part in the. Um, okay. Now, now that you are, uh, a, you know, a, a bona fide influencer. Let's do what uh, influencers do. Which is? Create reels. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. It's time, okay. guys, for the Wild Drum Reel of the Day. Thank you so much so for much doing fun. that. It was so much fun, right? Um, I'm, and obviously, thank you so much for being here as well. This was such a wonderful chat, as always. Third time lucky that we said, <laughs> Finally. This one's going to be great. <laughs> yeah. But um, this has been fantastic. And uh, it's a little token of our appreciation. Yay. I do... love goodies. <laughs> of course. Never gets old. This is um, a little Ooh. gift hamper from our sponsor, Wild Drum. Oh, thank you, Wild so, Drum. It's a bunch of... Um... Ooh, yum. <laughs> Hot seltzers. Amazing. Uh, and gluten-free. There we gluten -free, go. Gluten-free, low-cal. Like I think it's like 100 calories or something like that. It's, 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 you're going to love it. Love it. Thank you yeah. so much. All right, awesome. My pleasure. And thank you so much for being here. And uh, we'll see you at the next party. 100%. And should we tell everyone where you're going to be shooting your next season? Oh, that's right. Let's do this. Season two of The Accidental Influencer is coming soon. But we will be uh, moving from this venue. This is, this is the Koi Bar at the Penthouse at the St. Regis. I love it here. We've all had a great uh, season. But we are now moving to... The Good Creator Lounge in Juhu. So if you're a content creator, then I'm sure you may have already heard of it. It's the space where creators come together to collaborate uh, and do great stuff. So I look forward to seeing you there. This is going to be so much fun. And uh, yeah, thank you so much Thanks for Thanks for watching. Bye. Like, subscribe, share, do all that. <laughs> yeah. The Accidental Influencers presented by Wild, a visa-powered payment card that allows anyone with as little as 1,000 followers to encash their influence with every purchase. It's as simple as buy, post, and earn. This show is powered by Wild Drum, India's first hard seltzer brand, a low-calorie, vegan, and gluten-free alcoholic beverage. We're shooting at the gorgeous Koi Bar at the Penthouse at the St. Regis, Mumbai, our venue partner for The Accidental Influencer. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like and share it and subscribe to our channel for more of The Accidental Influencer podcast. And follow at getwild.in on Instagram to know more about Wild. I will see you in the next episode. Wild.